throwback Thursday night as we welcome you to an historic McCaslin Fieldhouse in Norman, Oklahoma. Sooner Basketball is presented by OU Health on Sooner Vision from ESPN+. Plus. We're expecting over 3,500 students tonight to watch their unbeaten 25th ranked Oklahoma Sooners host the UAPB Golden Lions in the first game at McCaslin Fieldhouse for Sooner Basketball since 2012. With Brendan Manzarak, Chad McKee, Oklahoma is coming off a championship in San Diego, one of those ESPN events over this weekend. And Brendan, Javion McCollum, our OU Health Sooner to watch tonight, was a big part of that. What do you like about how he's playing? He, he's a playmaker, a terrific combo guard that can have the ball or play off of it. Obviously, he's great at San Diego. Really a guy that just makes plays. It lets the game come to him in a big way. For UAPB, Kylan Milton is a guy who was mainly a bench player last year. How has he elevated his importance for Coach Solomon yeah, Bozeman? He shot it well from three a year ago, Chad, but now he's driving it. He gets to the line over eight times a game. So one skill set plays off the other. That's why he's scoring 21 a night. Had 25 against Arkansas Baptist in their last ball game. Before we tip this off, let's get into Brendan's keys presented by Riverwind Casino. It's always a good time. What's important for the Golden Lions? Well, Pine Bluff makes 11 threes a game, so they want to continue to knock those down here, obviously, and then freeze. Free throws. They want to get to the line. Force Oklahoma to defend with fouling and take away the strength. Oklahoma's got to obviously defend the three-point line here tonight, Chad. They've been really good defensively, and especially in San Diego, taking away the strengths of the offensive team they're playing. This is Rashawn Williams with the dribble handoff here to Lanell Martin Jr. Now Joe French trying to go to work. Miles Yuzan the steal hit ahead. Otega Oway finds one home. Defense creating offense to start. Now so much late on the perimeter with this ball play. Williams buries a three from deep the other way. So Rashad Williams. This team, as Porter Moser said, they have four legitimate different level scorers. Four players also that shoot better than 40% from three, including Williams shooting 42%. But they're not all just threes or nothing. All of them can put it on the deck as well. You will have a little challenge with where the lines on the floor are. The regular volleyball floor is still down in the Gaslam Fieldhouse, so the basketball court is kind of taped off here. Let's look at this steal and bucket. Now, this has been a theme for Oklahoma in the month of November. Points off turnovers. There's Yuzan getting Oway. And Oway, Chad, you, know, you and I have talked a lot about it before the game. How productive he is in terms of his scoring. Either it's transition points or offensive rebounds like against USC. He always finds a way to score efficiently. Jalen Moore gets fouled on his way to the bucket. Sooners will inbound. There's Porter Moser. He came to a volleyball game here at the Caslin Fieldhouse. His first season as head coach. Looked around, saw the names up in the rafters, such as Gar Hurd, who we understand is going to be here tonight, Alvin Adams. And he said, this could be special with student involvement. It has become a special night already if John Hughley scores. McCollum with a steal. Jalen Moore gets the lay in. What a start for Oklahoma defensively, Brendan. Ishmael flat into the corner. Milton lines one up. No. And more the rebound. Long pass to John Hughley running the floor, and he's fouled underneath by Ishmael Platt. Oklahoma picking up full court, and they're able to do that because they're putting the ball in the basket, which allows them to get set up. What a great play right there. You see athleticism from Moore. Right here, Oklahoma's bigs, and we saw in that last possession, and I would put more in that conversation at this point, they run the floor really well. Hughley right there, a rim runner. High Bluff's going to have to get back in transition. McCollum with a deep three, and it's good. Javion McCollum knocking down the triple. 32% from behind the line this year. Doesn't settle takes good threes, and he makes just enough to keep you honest. Williams can't answer. Left the rebound. Golden Lions get a reset. feel like UAPP just kind of has to survive this initial thrust by Oklahoma Brennan. Well, they've got to take care of the ball. That's first and foremost how you survive. French hits the fall away and a foul underneath. I think they will count the bucket. Yes, they will. And we'll see who the foul is against. Might be the second on Platt as he kind of discarded Javion McCollum underneath. 
Solomon Bowes with third season as head coach at UAPB. Last year they were 10 and 21, off to a good start this year. Four and four wins over champion Christian Southwest Christian at Central Arkansas and over Arkansas Baptist. That game against Arkansas Baptist, he coaches against his dad, Eric, who's the head coach there at Arkansas Baptist. So would they uh, talk about that at the kitchen table or just uh, leave it alone? Might have made Thanksgiving a little <laughs> interesting. <laughs> So for Oklahoma tonight, they do not have the availability of Sam Godwin. That means in all likelihood we will soon see more of the young man we just saw check in. That's Nick Northweather who places John Hugo. And you see Jalen Moore at the five sum when uh, Hughley and Northweather are not in the ballgame. Sam Godwin just out with illness. Hope to get him back. ASAP, he's off to a very good start. The Sam Godwin, but not available tonight. Usant, shot clock down to seven. Baseline lob more got fouled. He's trying to go up and attack the rim. He gets bumped by Robert Lewis. First on Lewis. And UAPB will drop back in that 3 2 zone. And they like to use it a lot tonight. They would be able to get into it, Chad, if the tempo was a little bit slower. So they've got a score to get in there. Column. It's Otega all the way on the backdoor cut. Kind of slipped a little bit. We've seen that a couple of times under the bucket right there. Maybe a little moisture. Chad, the feeling here with, with the students right on top of the court. And obviously the court is 94 by 50, but I'm sure out there to UAPB it feels smaller against that pressure. Williams had to go up over Northweather, who impacted the shot. Sooners transition. McCollum jets the other way, but has it raked away out of bounds, and it goes off of McCollum and back to the Golden Lions. Boy, great play and transition by Martin right there. That is so tough when you're backpedaling and you've got that driver coming right at you in transition, Chad. But what great hands and stripping it from a couple. Well, we see part of that big time bench that Porter Moser has already shown this year is Rivaldo Soares is in and Latre Darnhart. They go to the bench with very little, if any, drop off. There, there, there is none, especially defensively. This pull up 12 footer rims in and a foul as Linnell Martin Jr. knocks it down and Luke Northweather knocked him down. So it's a three point opportunity for the Golden Lions. Well, Martin, little mid range right here. Transferred from Montana a year ago. This team's got a lot of seniors, only one underclassman that plays any significant minutes. So there's experience on this ball club. Martin, a guy that gives him good size out there on the perimeter. He's averaging about 10 points per night. Knocks that one down, the old-fashioned three-point play. We've got a one-point ball game. Yeah, this UAPB team can really score with the basketball. It's at multiple spots. We've talked about the shooters that they have. Coach Bozeman's always had scores that could light it up. Speaking of scores, there's Milos Yuzan with the triple from the right wing. Yuzan hasn't scored much yet, but he hasn't had to. He's been a terrific game manager, though, at that point guard position. San Diego, Chad, if you were out there, the two ball games, 13 assists and just one turnover. Yeah. He had a nine assist, no turnover game in their win over Iowa one week ago today, in fact. That foul's going to be on Milos Yuzan on the air ball. That is first on Yuzan. Two against the Sooners here in the opening half. See referee Jeff Hartness over there explaining things to Porter Moser, Jeff Hartness, Amy Potter, Randy Richardson, our three officials in charge tonight. What a great environment. 15 to shoot, Dart Hard with a steal for the Sooners. Dart Hard around a defender off the window and in a steal and a deuce. Well, there's that lack of drop-off that Coach Moser has when he goes to the bench. Guard hard, a 3 and D type of player. Linked right there. Good job of pushing the ball up the floor. Martin is off the mark. Oklahoma's bench on average outscoring opposing benches by 17 a game. This guy's been a part of it. Rivaldo Soros, though, off the mark with that one. Williams all the way the other way. Beautiful nice pizza play. Milton. They catch it in on that way in. Triple penetration. UAPP coming right back. Sooners by four approaching our first media stoppage of the night. 
15 to shoot for Dart Hart. Lobbing it in, Northweather. Northweather will put it on the deck. Six to shoot. Nice little pass by Soares. Yuzan can't land the three. And the rebound picked off by the Golden Lions. Lewis got it. The shot of Williams attacking Soares. And a reset here. Martin Jr. throws, fires. The ball is Soares for the Sooners the other way. No look pass to Northweather. It got tipped and then went off of Northweather and out of bounds as we go to break. Good start for the Sooners, Brendan. And a good start for Los Yuzan, the Oklahoma point guard and game manager. Some points from him from long range right there. And then his points off turnovers. For a trade dart hard, Oklahoma already has. This holiday season, find your healthy at Sprouts Farmers Market. Farm fresh, organic ingredients, healthy essentials, and unique offerings. Find an endless array of high quality products perfect for any dietary lifestyle. your comfort amidst the chaos and find your healthy this holiday season at Sprouts. Back out there, Jalen Moore is also back out. Soares, McCullough, Dart Hart, some of the early shooting numbers. UAPB 4 of 10, Oklahoma 6 of 8. The Sooners have already knocked home a pair of threes this evening. Shot clock down to 15 for the Golden Lions. Hubley knocks the ball away from Lewis, who has to retrieve it. Now time's getting to short for the Golden Lions. Williams drove it off his leg. Milton tried to bail him out. Pretty good defensive set for Oklahoma so far. Milton, a pull-up. No, Soares with another rebound. Well, UAPB, they're going to basically space Oklahoma, five out, zero in, sometimes four out, one in. And it really, Chad's going to come down to individual defensive assignments. Contain, contest, block off. Column, Soares out top, 10 to shoot. UAPB changing defenses. We're seeing some full court, little zone right now. Column slips right through that zone, but misses. Lewis has the rebound for UAPB. And I think they would like to play a heavy dose of that 3-2 if possible. That ball thrown away. Lewis could not retrieve it. Golden Lions turn it over on average only about 13 times a game. Solomon Bozeman said when we've got a four-guard lineup such as this, feels like he has a chance to win every night. And as you mentioned, Porter Moser calls them Corvers, Kyle Corver type plays, guys that can really shoot it from deep. UAPB certainly has that on this roster. They can make the threes. They got three guys who are 40% or better from three-point range and make at least one three per game. Well, and collectively, and they're shooting 39% as a ball club, as a team. I guess if you have four guys, Chad, really, really good at math, that shoot over 40%. That's I'm not. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Darn hard, lines up a corner three, knocks that one home. Yeah, better ball movement, that possession against that defense. Chad, whoever's out front, the point guard position, they have to have good body language, be active, and yet to get the ball below the free throw and get free throw line, get flat along that baseline. Jalen Moore takes that one away inside. Here's McCullum. Bob it over the top for Hughley to score it. Soares with the drop down. Yeah, and that's smart by Oklahoma because. Pine Bluff doesn't have the size inside to match up necessarily with Weebly and even more. You were talking about Suarez, Brendan, the value that he brings. It's plays like that. He's only turned the ball over how many times this year? Four, four, times, four times in 129 minutes. So you get great defense out of him. You get mostly very good decision making in the half court offensively. And you get ball secure. And you get that right there. Yeah, I mean, look, that's, that's Soros right in the middle of it, as you said. Yeah, you, obviously, you and I have seen Oklahoma a lot already, already this year. But I love watching Soros play. And he's the type of guy in this league, this level, in the Big 12, every team needs. And he embraces that role. 
He's a guy that said, he gets two points, fine. If he scores 20, fine. You're still going to get that type of effort out of Suarez. He's one of three players that Porter Moser brings off the bench. There was a starter at his previous destination. That's Dart Hard, that's Ubley, and that's Suarez all coming off the bench. What a luxury that is. Really, eight starters. I mean, that, that's, that's your eight, and that's a pretty solid eight at this level of play. Dart Hart, cut off. Soros bumped. Yuzan wide open, but makes the extra pass for Moore, who cashes it in. Well, Yuzan will get credit for the assist, but that was just a simple play. Soros forces help. You get the ball moving, a couple of extra passes. More wide open there in the corner. This is an 8 nothing run for the Sooners. 13-2 overall. They've made 4 of 6 for three-point range tonight. Long three out of the hands of Martin Jr. Skims into the hands of Hughley. Defense has been more sound and solid for Oklahoma. Everything has been kept in front here in the last few minutes. Great ball rotation. Suarez got it. Oklahoma rolling, an 11 nothing run over the last two minutes, and a timeout for UAPB. Well, Oklahoma's started getting the stops, Chad, and they're also figuring out this zone. They've got the ball below the free throw line, get a touch inside, draw the defense in. Wide open three from shore as Oklahoma rolling. So much more athletic this year. They can get one into the four of the to the other quickly, and that's how you get those nine points off those four turnovers. I'll tell you something else that Oklahoma's continuing to do that we've seen as a trend for them this year. Their ten buckets, their ten made baskets, you have nine assists. So Ball moves with this team. The right decision most of the time is made. 10 of 13 from the field. That is 77% for Oklahoma so far. I think they like shooting in the old gym. There's a foul as Dart Hard commits that on Lionel Martin Jr. Well, that drive right there was a little more like what we saw in the first three or four minutes from the Lions. Ball movement and driving it. Now credit Oklahoma with good defense as of late, Chad, but the ball hasn't moved as crisply, and so they've been settling for jumpers and long-range threes. Ronald Mountain Jr. is transferred from Montana, native of Flint, Michigan, and he is perfect at the foul line this year. 20 for 20. That stops an 11-0 run for Oklahoma. I think Solomon Bozeman added some really good pieces in the offseason through the fourth. Yeah, he did. And Martin being one of those. He's pretty skilled, has good IQ. You know, they've had scorers his first two seasons. Sean Williams in 2021-22 was second in the SWAC in scoring. And last year, Sean Doss, 17 a game, led the SWAC in scoring. Well, and that's why you can go get a guy like Joe French or... Milton, because they know Bozeman is going to set them up in the situations where they can be successful offensively. Jalen Moore cleans it up, lays it in, Sooners by 15. Jalen Moore, solid starts, made both of his buckets so far. Point blank range, Hubley with another rebound. Great job right there by Darkhart. Again, that's what I was talking about earlier. That's just taking care of your individual defensive assignments. Torres, and then there to Hughley. One-on-one, -on it's a tough matchup for Jerry McLeod, and he fouls him. And there's some foul trouble for the Golden Lions. Ishmael Platt has three, so he's over on the bench for Solomon Bozeman, and it's already kind of front court by committee for the Golden Lions. Yeah, they're already built, at least their roster is geared towards that anyway, so when you take Platt out, he's probably their best interior defender. At 6 8, good rebounder. You take him out, and that just makes it that much tougher for the Lions to contend with Oklahoma size. That is six fouls against UAPB, so the Sooners will be in the bonus on the next foul and for the remainder of the half. 15 to shoot as Yusin glides down the baseline. Owe cut the basket and a foul. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
the thing, when you saw this Chad last year, even as a freshman that you use him, he understands what's potentially going to be there before the play ever starts developing. So you get a defender out of position, you saw him drive the left-hand side, eyes up, and he drove it, and as soon as the help came, he knew he could dump it down to Oway right there. This is really good vision that Yuzan has had since day one arriving on the Oklahoma campus. And Otega Oway catches and converts the old-fashioned three-point play. You see Luke Northweather back in. Otega Oway now with five. Seven different Sooners have scored. Eight have played, seven have scored. So balanced. But that's the way this team's been from the get-go. Milton curls off the screen and lands a floater off the window. That was nice. Uh, very smooth right there. Dark hard off the mark with that one. And the rebound to Anel Martin Jr. See, look, look at the extension of Oklahoma gets defensively on Pine Bluff's offense. They really shove you out of what you want to do. Williams with a tough shot. Yuzan was all over him. Sooners quick hit ahead from a column. Northweather traveled with it. Shuffled the beat quarter Moser saying, go ahead and shoot that big fella. Tell you what, the coach tells me that. You would never have to tell me that. <laughs> they would never have to tell you that once. Again. <laughs> Top dog. He, he's more of a Lloyd Noble center guy, but it's good to see him make an appearance here at the Castle Fieldhouse, Brendan. And it always reminds me of our good friend. That's right. Coach Fox. And, in fact, for the last broadcast we did here at the Castle Fieldhouse, Coach Tubbs did the broadcast with him. It was so great to have him. Well, this now Plex back in with three fouls, and he converts that. So they're taking a little bit of a risk, well, but they got to have it. Yeah, absolutely. You had a point if you're Coach Bozeman. I mean, you can't let this thing get away any further. And with their ability to score, if they can just get a couple of stops, they, they can get this under 10 and have a little momentum. Look at French. Beautiful just laying that in as he was able to roll around Northweather. Well, this is a tough matchup for Northweather defensively. You notice a couple of times here recently, those high bluff players have recognized that and they've taken it right to them. 12 points sooner lead. Northweather, little ball fake, hesitation dribble. Oh, he kicks it out. Wide open look for McCullum. No. And there's French with a rebound. And your point about UAPB, their ability to score. They've got three guys out there who have all scored at least 30 in a game. So there's some power pack potential. Here's Trajan Ware. Shot clock down to 10. French calling for a screen. Doesn't use it. Drives Northweather. Northweather fouled him as he blocked it. Northweather's feeling like he can't buy a break right now. Timeout. Sooners on top by a dozen in the first game at McCaslin Fieldhouse in 11 seasons. The home team looking good in their home away from home. Fashion. Quickly, that's Decision Tech, only from Fidelity. Five seven seven seven. This was over the weekend, Thanksgiving Day, and then Friday, Oklahoma claiming a championship. Otega Oway with 1.4 seconds left with that follow shot tipping it in as Oklahoma knocked off number 23 USC to win the championship of the Rady Children's Invitational. And Porter Moser's team now has been very good in these holiday events. They went down and were able to win in Kissimmee last year, nearly won one two years ago as well. But he talked with us about that tip in and, and why attention to detail and the scouting of it and his team doing what they trained to do, why that was so important for Otega Owe. Yeah, that's another reason this team has really improved for Oklahoma this year. They're all coachable. And you and I both know Porter Moser could coach both things before, but he told us ball club. Of coming out of the timeout, there's not going to be any reason for us to have defensive balance and get back. We need five guys to crash the glass. And USC did not check O way out. And what a great play. You know, athleticism and notes for the ball to go get it, but with the touch to secure it to make sure it went down. And the other thing was for Otega Oway specifically, he had been called for a foul in that exact same situation on the previous trip. Now, it might have been a disputable foul. But he went right back in there after it and created the game-winning play. 
Good run here for UAPB, Brenda. This is an 8 0 spurt for the Golden Lions to creep back within 10. Hughes in, left wide open. Off the mark. Jalen Moore tips that. Outraces everyone. McCullum drills it. Pretty good defense, but Oklahoma able to get the offensive rebound. And when that happens, the floor is broken. And so if you kick it out immediately, you're going to get those wide open shots. And you saw right there, McCollum, another thing that's great about him, everything is smooth within the realm of the game, rarely gets sped up. The second made three for McCollum. French misfiring on the three the other way. Four lines just one of nine from three-point range here in the first half. Here's more. Back down Kane McCauley. A little left-handed jump hook lands. Showing you his arsenal. Yeah, a lot of versatility with Moore. But we figured we would see that multiple times tonight, Porter Moser said. The, the sidelines and baselines are a little hard to see, and that's what happened there to UAPB. I'm still curious about Jalen Moore. Yeah, you can't dive down or dig on Moore because you have McCollum with him on that side. As you mentioned, he had a second three of the game. So defensively, you're isolated there. But you, you saw more the skill set, slow down. I always love to see guys go with that right shoulder on that offhand. Supers have made six threes in this half. Five different guys have made them. And there's Euclid who lays it in. Euclid was four for four from three points. Larry Brains get the win over USC last week. And, 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 yeah, and remember when Oklahoma separated themselves earlier in this half, a nice play right there, drawing help. It was because he got a heavy dose of those bigs, especially Hugley, touching it inside. You got to do that again right here on this possession. 15 point sooner lead, 6.15 to play. Take a away, putting it on the deck to the glass with the left hand. Seven for Otega Owe. Tough shot there. Milton got himself trapped and got bailed out with a foul call. And I think they're going to give you the Here's that last possession, Chad. No, now watch this first. I mean, it was just boom, blow by right there. And Owe is so strong. Once he gets the angle, even in league play, because he, he's a man, that body that he has, the frame, he gets that angle, you're not going to be able to hold him off. But I love Love how he's playing in this decision making. It's like always shooting nearly 70% from the floor this year. He's fourth in the Big 12 in field goal percentage. And I don't know if this would mean anything to people, but, you know, I, I, a lot of times you look at, you know, how are scores getting their points? So how many field goal attempts does it take to, to get your points? And Owe, coming into tonight, 90 points on just 56 field goal attempts. And so that means he's taking good shots, you know, the offensive rebounds, the steals, the transition points, and then the driving, and then the improved three-point shot. He's now, what's that, 5 of 5 over here? It's unbelievable how well he has shot it this year. That, that is a perfect 5 for 5 from three-point range this year. He made one three all last season. That's a bucket and a foul as Hughley once again fouls Milton on a lay-in. Well, Tega Owe does us a solid as we're bragging about him. Steps right up and knocks down a three. And this continues to be so efficient offensively while, maybe more importantly, turning into an elite defender. The Porter Moser told us the other day, he said he has earned this. The way that he is playing, it's come from hard work. That's earning it. And the old-fashioned three-point play there, good by Colin Milton. UAPP trying to hang around Sooners put together these spurts in the Golden Lions answer. 15-point advantage now. McCollum dishes to Moore. Can't convert. Platt has the rebound. Trying to find Platt, stolen by Otega Owe. Lob for Moore, and he cannot quite finish it. Golden Lions have numbers here. They can take advantage, but instead they turn it over. And now the Sooners have numbers. McCullough 
Oh, beautiful ball fake, but lost it. Moore is there to fix it. And the Lions have dodged a couple of bullets. Well, Moore missed two bunnies, and then they come down and turn it over. That's an opportunity. You've got a 15 point game. You have to make those plays. Or worth something. And Oklahoma helps you out. That was the Sooners' largest lead before the bucket by Lionel Martin Jr. So, 15 point cushion. We approach the four minute media timeout here at the opening half. Rivaldo Soros. Kind of probing that defense and turned it over. Here's French for the lay in. And it's blocked. Otega always soaring from out of nowhere. How about a more three? And a foul will be on, I believe, they will get Martin Jr. for the foul. Watch this athleticism right here from Owen. I didn't think there was any way he was going to get there. That's goaltending. Should have been a goal yeah, tenure, I, right? thought, I thought on the naked eye that ball hit the glass. I think now they, they can go on another four media timeout and review that play. The yeah. officiating crew. I think there's a chance we have a scoring adjustment during this timeout. But it still doesn't take away, again, the burst for Owe to even get there. We're going to see Caden Cooper for the first time tonight. I think Sooner Frenchman. A lot of talent and ability that he has. This will be the fourth game in which he's played this season. And Rivaldo Sordes to the foul line. Uh, Cooper, a, a lot of promise and upside. A, pretty much a consensus four-star recruit. And honestly, in a lot of other situations, he would be playing a part of the rotation. Right now, Oklahoma's improved roster and a good ball club. You've got eight mostly veterans that uh, Porter Moser is rotating in there. But it's not, it's not, Cooper not playing much has nothing to do of where he is right now as a player in terms of a freshman. See him out top guarding on this pressure against Trajan Ware. Under four minutes left in the first half. Sooners have equaled their largest lead, 17. This is French. Stops in the paint. Sooners cutting off only five to shoot here. Williams trying to go to work against Yusin. They reset the shot clock there, and now it has expired. That's Oklahoma in the first six or seven games of this year. Just a lot of solid defense. They built a 17-point lead at historic McCaslin Fieldhouse with 3.32 to play in the first half. PlayStation 5. It's eight-season tournament time. It's NBA or ESPN time. That's our move. A new season of Women's College Hoops on the networks of ESPN. Packed house for Porter Moser's team inside McCaslin Fieldhouse. First game in this building for Sooner Basketball since 2012, and they're showing out defensively, Brendan. Yeah, here's that last defensive from Oak. Possession from Oklahoma. So, Suarez does his job, one-on-one -on -one containment. Dart hard does his job with one-on-one -on -one containment. Look at Yuzan. Everything in front. And while this is going on, the shot clock is winding down. So, you don't gamble. You're solid. You use your link to contain. You know, that's a situation, too, Chad. Well, right now, on the four, Jalen Moore is the five. You don't have Sam Godwin tonight. North Weather and Hughley out. So, you go ultra-athletic. And long. And the other thing I was part of it was those defenders one pass away were up the floor. So UAPB could never be comfortable. And that's just textbook defense, sound solid with very good athletes. Soros lines up a three. No. And they feel like that's going to come around. Dark Hart has not shot it great so far this year. That, that's another bright spot. No, that's right. And Dark Hart is a proven three-point shooter over his career. Dark Hart tonight has made a three. Sword is looking for his first. Ten to shoot for the Golden Lions. Dark Hart with solid defense. And Martin Jr. falls out of bounds. And that's more good sooner D. Nine UAPB yeah, turnovers. And I know it's interesting to you because you know I love defense for a guy that 
was an excellent defender. Well, you play for a coach, right? Who could coach a lot of defense. But right there, see so the other thing Oklahoma's doing this year is they are there on the catch. So in other words, when the ball moves, maybe a guy comes off the screen, the handoff right there, Carhartt is right there. And then they're there on the catch, they gain control of the offensive player, and then they're sound and solid. Which is, that's how they extend you out. And we talked to Porter Moser about this a couple of days ago, but can you defensively take away other teams' strengths and, and force them to change what they want to do offensively a little bit? And this team looks like it can. The five bluffs one of nine from three point runners. Right now. You're talking about a team that has made, I mean, they played Minnesota. They played on the road at Ball State. They played some quality people and had success shooting the basketball. They make 11 threes a game. Oklahoma, not only they only made one, they've only taken nine. They're, they're not allowing them to get the threes up. Five to shoot. Hughes in. Finds a wide open Jalen Moore. And that one is good. Jalen Moore knocking down his second three of the night. I guess you call that a stretch five. I think so. Sooners threatened to hang a half a hundred on him here in the first half. So Oklahoma's made eight threes in the first half. Dark Hall, Soros, Usen, Moore's made two, McCollum, and Owen, they've all made one. Multiple threats from downtown. 20 point lead, the largest of the night. Kyle Milton going to go to the foul line. Kyle Milton's a good story. Mainly a bench player last year to transfer from Western Kentucky. Spent 2020, 2021 there. But 37% three point range in SWAC play last year for Solomon Bozeman's team. Has a career high of 42 points. So he can really score at a time. And it's 25 point effort against Arkansas Baptist. Yeah, I think they're going to have a really good year in the SWAC. And I've seen them pitch all over the place, mostly in the middle of the league. I would be surprised if they're, in the very least, upper third and maybe even better. Jackson State went on the road and won at Missouri earlier this year. Here's Darnhart. And it rings in. I think this team may ask to play here again with the kind of shooting performance they've had. I wouldn't be able to play them. Well, it's good to see Darnhart knock a couple of those down. As you mentioned, very good three-point shooter in his career. In fact, 38% over four years. So he's proven but only one of eight from the range, long range out in San Diego. Martin, that's a tough shot as Cooper had good position on him defensively. Hey, what between Martin, French, Williams, and Milton, this team, they can go. Yeah, absolutely. They can improve on this end of the floor. Here's Cooper. Milton has the rebound. Been a 15 to play in the opening half here at the Castle Fieldhouse. We're going to honor many past Sooner basketball players who played here at the Castle Fieldhouse. Last season for basketball here was 1975. There's Martin Jr. following his own miss, but can't land that one either. Wet plucks it away. And a foul on Yuzan. So Milo's Yuzan picks up his second. And that is seven against the Sooners. Oklahoma does not foul a lot of so We talk about the win over USC. USC was a team that got to the line about 27 times per game. They got a couple of players in Isaiah Collier and Boogie Ellis who are probably going to be top 15 picks. And Oklahoma did not let them make a difference from the foul. Well, we, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier in this game, Chad. What this team is really good at is taking away the strengths. And you look at the Iowa game. Iowa is prolific offensively, shoots the three well. And they were 423 from three-point range. Otega Owe, offensive rebound. McCollum's three is off the mark. And out of bounds off the shooter. I mean, isn't that what defense is supposed to be? Take away what the other team does well. And, and make them try to beat you a different way. And that's Another thing I think with this team that's encouraging, and they've consistently done that through six games, no matter who they play. Milton's good crossover gets held by Otega Owe. 
So more free throws for the Golden Lions. Yeah, they're much more successful when they've tried to get downhill first. And, and it's much easier said than done against a very good defensive team in Oklahoma. But right now, when the Lions are driving it, they're driving with strength. Sooners will take their use it or lose it timeout here. 27.9 to play in the opening half. And Oklahoma by 20 here at McCaslin Fieldhouse. Once again, the Sooner home for basketball from 1928 to 1975. The first game here, Hugh McDermott's Sooners beat Fog Allen's Kansas Jayhawks 45 to 19 before over 5,000 fans. That was in 1928. It was the second worst loss in the career of Fog Allen. Uh, Oklahoma went 18 and 0 that year. They won eight conference titles in this building. One in the Missouri Valley Conference, six in the Big Six, one in the Big Seven. And it's named for Howard McCaslin, who was a Sooner Center back in 1914 through 1916. How about that? Well, this is the first time I have been in here. And this is pretty awesome. I, 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 I think it was a terrific idea. We've got the students here. You know, it's like the old days when the fans are right on top of you. Yes. I think about some of those old big eight arenas. You may have played in a couple back in uh, your playing days. Yeah, Burns Center at Mizzou. Ahern at K State. I did play in the Hearn Center. And that was, I think, it was straight up and down. Even the upper levels, when you walked in, you just felt like 15,000 was on top of it. Oklahoma State had an old as Gallagher yeah. Hall before yeah. they added Iba to the name and refurbished it in the mid 80s. Second free throw, good. That quiets this crowd. All students. Nearly all students here tonight, but they have really shown up. They got the message, and Porter Moser applauding them as he came out from the locker room before the game. Final shot of the opening half. 18-point Sooner lead. Balanced scoring. Sooners have shot 59% and forced nine turnovers. Oh, wait. No. Darnhart's tip it. More can't quite follow it. And the first half is in the books here at the Kazan Fieldhouse. 52 34. Sooners, what impressed you most, Brendan? State Oklahoma defensively never lost focus. Um, the ball continues to move and be shared, evident by Oklahoma's 16 assists on 20 made baskets. So, really good at both ends of the floor because UAPB is very talented on the offensive end. They got some guys that could go make some buckets.